Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, probably two years or so late, we are finally going to be taking a look at the Art Philosophy by Prima Art Confections Decadent Pies Watercolor Set. Try to say that five times fast. Prima came into the market a couple years back and was a huge hit amongst hobbyist watercolorists and crafters alike. They curate various collections of student or craft grade watercolors focused around a particular theme, such as a classics collections, a tropical theme, pastel dreams, shimmer lights, and more. They have rebranded their packaging several times since they hit the market, and to my knowledge, this one in the video is the most recent iteration. The box is quite pretty and has a little swatches to show you which colors you can expect to find inside side while the tin itself is very similar to other metal pans on the market. Before metal tins were commonly available, a lot of people would actually purchase these sets for the tins themselves, regardless of whether or not they were interested in the paints. Today that's not much of a problem since Meaden is available, but these sets retail for around $30 at MSRP, but are commonly found on Amazon for around $20 if you want to pick one up. The pans are all individually wrapped with both paper and plastic and with very little information provided on the label. The color names, which have also changed over the years, as well as a company identification number are printed on the front. However, no other pigment information is available, but we'll talk more about that in just a few moments. The paints themselves are extruded, meaning that they were dried in these blocks and then cut to fit the pans rather than being poured into the pans with wet paint. The texture of these paints varies from color to color, but most of them do feature a rough top surface. If you've been around the channel for a while, you might remember a while back when I did my Jane Davenport review that I had a similar issue with those. When wet, some of the colors take on a mushy, crumbly texture with these larger chunks in it. This isn't granulation that watercolors often seek, but rather unincorporated pigment granules as far as I can tell. If you were to go straight from the pan to your paper, these chunks of pigment will transfer to your paper and then just kind of sit there on top of the paper surface. However, if you take it first to your palette and kind of work out those chunks a little bit more, the clumps will dissolve. However, this is an extra precaution that I don't think should be a standard expectation with watercolor. Given that the paints are very visually similar and react in the same ways, it is widely hypothesized or rumored, whatever you want to call it, that both Jane Davenport and Prima use the same manufacturer to create their palettes. Lindsay the Frugal Crafter actually just did a recent video on Muangio paints and compared them with both of these brands that I've been mentioning. I'll put a link in the description below so you can go ahead and check that out after you've watched this video if you haven't already seen it. Ultimately, that video will help you from duplicating your colors in your collection and is a really great resource to have. The first thing I did once all of my Decadent Pies paints were unwrapped was to place them in the palette and swatch them out on the card provided in the set. However, I do want to note here that this is not watercolor paper. It pills very easily and has somewhat of a shiny surface that don't really let the paints show as their true colors, both literally and figuratively speaking. We are also going to be doing a direct comparison in a few moments with my typical swatch cards, but I do have a note that I wanted to add in here before we do that. I had already recorded, scanned in the swatches with similar hue comparisons, and edited all this footage together when one of my awesome patrons, Samantha, reminded me about Lindsay's video, as well as a very important resource that Rich from The Spin Doctor has also compiled. Now, I do have to admit that I do remember seeing this list months ago from Rich, but when I was doing my research for this video, my fiber brain completely spaced out, and it also didn't come up in my Google search right away, so darn that SEO. Um, for this reason, and because Prima doesn't directly provide this information, you're not going to see the pigment information written on the swatch cards because I didn't have it at the time. However, I want to give a huge thanks for Rich for getting to the bottom of this whole thing, communicating with Prima, and compiling the information on this blog for all of us to see. I'll of course put a link to that blog post in the description below as well so that you can check it out for yourself. The Decadent Pie set contains four shimmery pigments. I don't think that I would call them metallic colors as they seem more pearlescent and soft to me. I'm not going to be showing comparisons since I don't have a large collection of shimmery colors, but here are the scans all side by side of these four colors. Do note that the shimmer is not picked up by the scanner, so you're seeing the underlying hue here, which I know isn't super, super helpful, but I'm going to kind of try and briefly comment on each. White Mocha is a white 
lightly shimmering color that is moderately opaque and I think would be best used with mixed into other colors for a soft pearlescent quality or glazed on top of other colors for a stronger shimmer. The Earl Grey was actually the color that I was probably most disappointed by in this entire set. I wet all of these colors before swatching them, but the color payout from this one is still really weak after it had plenty of time to soak. If you want a light gray that barely just hints at a sparkle, then this would be the color for you, but otherwise I would look somewhere else if you're looking for a silver watercolor. It also contains PBK9, which is made from animal bones, so it's not going to be suitable for vegans. Pistachio Cream, on the other hand, was a deeply pigmented color, and while the shimmer is still subtle, it is more impactful than the silver and would be a good choice if you wanted a soft metallic touch. The Guava Meringue is probably the most noticeably sparkly color of the four. It is a salmon type color, and even though it's listed as containing a pale gold type of metallic sheen, it actually looks like a slightly warmer silver shimmer to me. Moving on to the proper swatch comparisons, first up is Banana Cream. Banana Cream is a Naples yellow type of color that also resembles titanium gold ochre that you've seen from me before. Prima's is made from PY42, which is yellow ochre, and PY6, which is not commonly seen in watercolors, but it is a variant of Hansi Yellow. Banana Cream is transparent, but the PY6 is noted as being rated as somewhat poor in light fastness. Next up is Peach Cobbler, which is sort of a Caucasian skin tone type color. I left the Naples here from the last slide for comparison, but this one is more similar to a Jean Brilliant, although notably more orange than the samples I have. In the composition of this paint, we are going to see a color that is going to come up a lot actually in this collection, and that is P013. This is Benzidine Orange, and while it's rated fair in light fastness if you use it in its mass tone, it's actually poor in watercolor tints. It's best suited for work that will be reproduced rather than selling the original, so it's important to keep that in mind. Pumpkin is a similar hue to a raw sienna, but notably muddier feeling and slightly less transparent. It's made from PY42, PR101, and oddly enough, a touch of PB27, which is Prussian blue. Due to my usual color preferences with animals, this color does seem to be the most useful for me to gravitate towards on an everyday type of painting that I would work on. Though it's perplexing to me why they'd use such a complicated formula when other single or even dual pigment blends are suitable. I can only assume that it's a monetary advantage, but nonetheless, it's a theme that you'll see a lot in Prima's overall collection. Apple is a fairly unique color, although it does have some similarities with two other colors in my swatch collection, Quinn Burnt Scarlet and Quinn Burnt Orange. It's made from PR101, fair enough, but also PY14, which is a fugitive yellow that's used in many inks, and PR48 colon 4, which is a permanent red pigment that is said to be more light fast at least than its fugitive cousin at PR48. Pecan is probably my favorite hue in this set, as it closely resembles PBR25, which many of you know I have a fondness for. However, unlike the light fast PBR25, this color is unfortunately made with the less light fast PR48,4 and PO13 pigment. It also contains that PBK9, which is bone black and once again not suitable for vegans. Blackberry is another lovely hue, somewhat closely resembling indigo, although it is a bit warmer than Holbein's version and more vibrant than Daniel Smith's. Once again, it contains that PBK9 as well as PB27 and PR101, which actually makes a lot of sense when looking at the hue itself. Next up, we have the only single pigment color in this entire set, which is just a phthalo blue. The texture of this color resulted in a patchy wash on my arches paper, but other than that, it's comparable to other phthalo blue green shades. The final color in this set is Key Lime, though if you're looking at a Key Lime pie that is this color, I'd probably recommend a hard pass. It sits pretty evenly between olive green and sap green, and like those other colors often are, it is made from multiple pigments, and in this case, that is absolutely fine. This one contains PB27, PY14, and PB15,3, all of which we've already seen in this set. 
It does appear that even though Prima is using seemingly unnecessary multi-pigment blends for a lot of their colors, there does seem to be some consideration to keep all of them unified by being made with similar or overlapping pigments. If I counted correctly, every single pigment that you'll see in these different mixtures of the Decadent Pies was used at least twice except for PY6 and the gold metallic colors. While this is a drawback for me because I would rather have single pigment colors that I can mix to get all these other variations and then some, this could be seen as a benefit for hobbyists and crafters who simply want a cohesive set without having to know about pigment information or color theory. That being said, this set was gifted to me by a viewer from my very own wish list, and just a quick thank you to that person. I think it was anonymous, but thank you, thank you for the kind gift. And the reason that I chose this particular Prima collection over the others was because I was drawn to the really soft, lovely, earthy color palette. So I don't want you guys to walk away from this video thinking I'm not happy with the color selection. For what they are, an affordable set of craft paints, they hold up to what I would expect from them. I just wouldn't recommend them as a mixing palette or to be used in originals that you plan to sell given the questionable light fastness of several of the pigments. I of course wanted to use them in a painting to be able to better judge their practical application, and one of my patrons requested a sheep this month. So given this earthy collection of colors with the Decadent Pie set, I thought it would be really fun to use it for this painting. I was actually a bit nervous to show off the final product as I decided to use a stylized color palette using an earthy yellow for the highlights and a noticeably blue shadow color. Given how hesitant I was, I was completely taken aback and honestly a bit overwhelmed by the positive response you guys showed me when I posted it to my Instagram stories. I don't think I've ever had that many messages in my inbox for a single painting before, and I am so glad that everyone seemed to enjoy it so much. I hope that the rest of you guys here on YouTube enjoy the time-lapse version as well, seeing it all get to come together, and the real-time tutorial is available over on Patreon at the $5 tier along with dozens of other tutorials if you are interested in checking that out. I will also go ahead and add a pre-order listing to the Etsy shop if you'd like a print, though I am out of town the first week of November, so they won't ship until a little bit later. I hope you all enjoyed this long overdue review for the Decadent Pies watercolor set by Prima. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and comment down below to let me know how you used this set or another favorite from Prima. Thank you to everyone for watching, to Lindsay and Rich for the resources on the Prima pigment information, and of course a special thanks to all of my patrons for helping to support this channel. Thanks again, and until next time, happy painting!